everyone and welcome to this week's episode of 8 Weeks Essential 8. My name's Mel and you can think of me as sort of like a guide, but instead of taking you through the Amazon jungle, I'm going to be teaching you things like multi-factor authentication. Uh, not nearly as exciting I know, but it is important. So let's begin. So a couple of topic areas we'll be going into this episode are the history of the Essential 8 and whether you need to implement the strategies. And we'll also be discussing the maturity model and how to identify a maturity level that is suitable for your business. So the Essential 8 was actually originally developed to promote solid security and operational practices within Australian governmental agencies, the departments, local councils and other businesses in the public sector. But now, uh, many private businesses are also looking at the Essential 8 because it's a good launching place for measuring security controls and setting a foundation for cybersecurity. The Australian Cybersecurity Centre, or the ACSC, are the current custodians of the Essential 8. When it comes to the security of your business information, there are so many factors that come into play like the sensitivity of your data or how many employees you have. Uh, so that's why there's not really a one-size-fits-all approach to cybersecurity. What works for your business might be completely disastrous for another one. Uh, to quote the ACSC, so the Australian Cybersecurity Centre, so while no single mitigation strategy is guaranteed to prevent cybersecurity incidents, organisations are recommended to implement eight essential mitigation strategies as a baseline. This baseline, known as Essential 8, makes it much harder for adversaries to compromise systems. As I mentioned previously, the ACSC initially created the Essential 8 to mandate the security compliance across governmental branches. So uh, while it's not mandatory for most businesses in the private sector, it's still highly recommended. And that's because the suggested strategies are a great set of security control methods that provide a framework for businesses to manage their IT security risks. It's really crucial now more than ever that we do focus on information security and protecting our data and the Essential 8 is built to do exactly that. So in short, the Essential 8 strategies were chosen specifically to fortify against the most important aspects of information security with their main purpose being to protect against malware, ransomware, and cyber intrusions. Uh, the strategies are actually broken up into three components, so that's prevent attacks, limit the extent of attacks, and data availability and recovery. So what are the essential eight strategies? Uh, so to prevent malware delivery and execution, we have application control, patch applications, configure office macro settings, and user application hardening. To limit the extent of cybersecurity incidents, we have restrict admin privileges, patch operating systems, and multi-factor authentication. And uh, finally, to recover data and system availability in the event of a successful attack, we have daily backups. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about the Essential 8 strategies in this episode because we will be discussing them in detail over the next few weeks. But what I do want to focus on is the Essential 8 maturity model. So before you can get to implementing the strategies, the ACSC suggests that you identify a maturity level that's suitable for your business. Um, the maturity levels range from maturity level zero to maturity level three, and they aim to protect you against the increasing knowledge, skills, procedures, tools that an adversary may use, and whether they target specific companies or if they're more opportunistic. Uh, so let's start with uh, maturity level zero, which was actually reintroduced this year. This level signifies that there are weaknesses in an organization's overall cybersecurity posture. So whether you have none of the strategies in place or if you succeeded in implementing a couple of the strategies, your cybersecurity maturity will be considered level zero. Uh, and that's because you still have those missing control methods in place that will leave you open to attack. Adversaries tend to go for the lowest hanging fruit, so even if you have a really good backup strategy or you use multi-factor authentication, they can and they will find other ways to exploit your system. 
So a lot of you will be starting off at level zero and that's completely fine because you're just attesting to the fact that one or more of your security controls may not be covering your organization's cybersecurity risks adequately. Uh, so moving on to maturity level one, this maturity level focuses on mitigating the risk of a cyber attack from an opportunistic adversary. So they're looking for any victim rather than a specific target. For instance, they use normal tools and common tools that are available online uh, to identify common exploits or vulnerabilities in your software or your operating systems that may be unpatched. Uh, so you want to mitigate against common threats and adversaries out there who are, you know, as I said, opportunistic rather than targeting organizations with any key objectives to get access to specific information. They're still a threat, um, particularly if they manage to affect the availability of your systems. Okay, and now let's move on to maturity level two and three, where adversaries tend to become a little bit more difficult to defend against. Uh, the focus of maturity level two is to fight against adversaries who are better equipped and employ more advanced techniques. So they may be specifically targeting your organization instead of just you know, spamming you with phishing emails. And they might attempt to impersonate users or accounts in your organization so that they can gain uh, privileges and access your data. These adversaries are happy to invest more time into their targets and they're often better at bypassing security controls and evading detection. And uh, rather than casting a wide net like uh, those that are in maturity level one, they are more selective with who they target, but they're also sort of wary about the time or the money and the effort that they invest to compromise their target systems. And finally, we have maturity level three, which is the highest level, of course, and uh, this maturity level focuses on deterring adversaries who can exploit opportunities they seek in their target cybersecurity posture. So they'll find any crack in your security controls, um, like old software or inadequate monitoring. They are incredibly knowledgeable and use techniques and tools that are not commonly used by less experienced adversaries. Uh, they'll make swift use of any exploits and will find ways to evade detection and solidify their presence um, in your network. They focus on very particular targets and are willing to invest a lot of time and effort into completely circumventing uh, their security controls. And they, you know, sometimes they will spend years planning just one attack. So as a side note, just to quote the ACSE again, uh, organizations are now advised to achieve a consistent maturity level across all mitigation strategies before moving on to a higher maturity level. And uh, this, is, this is because the essential aid strategies are designed to, to complement each other and provide a sort of blockade against several different threats at once. So it's important that you do plan your implementation to achieve the same maturity level across all the strategies before you move on to a higher maturity level. In this series, I'll be giving you tips on how to achieve maturity level one. So hopefully after the series is finished, you can sort of you know, take the information that you've gotten and target a higher level maturity if you need to. Uh, if you're a governmental department, agency, local council, uh, then it will be mandatory to implement the essential aid and to have a maturity level rating. So um, I'd suggest you have your essential aid implementation assessed by a third party or by your MSP if you have one. But if you're a small to medium sized business or even a larger organization who hasn't really begun their journey into cybersecurity, then I would still suggest you implement the strategies to the best of your ability. So you have a maturity level that sets a foundation for further cybersecurity controls, like if you wanna, um, if you wanna get the ISO 27, 27001 certification. 
And that's it for this episode, guys. Um, if you have any questions about the maturity model, the maturity levels, please feel free to email me and I'll see you next week for episode two.